This is my 1993 Chevrolet Silverado. Now the interior is in pretty decent shape, but the dash isn't doing so well. It's faded, it's dusty, and worst of all, it's brittle and cracked and missing chunks. So I'm replacing it with a new dash. Well, it's not new, but I got it on eBay and it's in much better shape. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how I do it. Now, just a quick warning. I've never done this before. I don't know what I'm doing, but neither do you. So we're gonna figure this out together and hopefully you can learn from the woes of my ways. And there are also other videos on YouTube that walk through this, but the more the merrier, because all of these trucks are a little bit different, especially if somebody has been inside them before. You might find a dead rat or a hornet's nest or a hornet's nest inside of a dead rat in the dash of your truck. Whatever happens, we're in this together and we're gonna get through this. Now let's say a prayer. All right, so for most of this, we're gonna be using seven millimeter hex screws, and that'll be like 98% of this, so you don't really have to switch tools too much, which is great, and there's really just a few non seven millimeters to worry about. We'll have two 13s holding the dash to the frame, two 15s holding the steering column up, two 10s holding the wire harness to the back of the dash, and five Phillips heads. One holds the glove box hinge, two of them hold the passenger vent in place, and the other two are just holding the steering column cover in place. Then there are four T20 Torx screws holding the gauge cluster bezel in, and basically other than that, it's all seven millimeters. And probably about 40 of them, I tried counting, but I lost track, but anything else is just held in with clips, and you can pop those out with a smudger or a flathead screwdriver. Uh, one thing worth noting that I did not do that you should do is go ahead and pop these panels out from the side. They just pop in with clips, but if you remove these before you do anything, it'll be a lot easier and you'll save some scritchy scratchies, which I have all over here. There's one panel on the passenger side, there's one panel on the driver's side over there. Just take them off, it'll, it'll change your life. So before we start just uh, tearing this thing out of this truck, uh, we're gonna start by taking out the guts. Uh, this is the dash assembly, and this holds all of this. So we're gonna start by taking out the radio. Uh, we gotta take this out so that we can take off this glove box cover. Uh, then we will be taking off the right AC vent. Then we're gonna take out the cup holder because it is gross and it is also broke. It's very, it's very busted. It doesn't have the cover. It doesn't look nice. We got a new one on eBay, so we're gonna replace that. Take this off, then we'll get to the, uh, the cigarette lighter and the ashtray. And we'll be removing uh, this, the gauge cluster, um, what the, the gauge cluster pod, I guess this is called. So we'll take this off. As part of that, we'll be lowering the drive column. Make sure your uh, truck is on, has blocks in front of the wheels because when you when you lower that, it'll, it'll be scary if not, uh, especially if you're on a hill. Then we'll be removing the hood latch, but we'll be leaving the parking brake on because that we take off from the back once we've got the dash off. And as a quick pro tip, make sure you're labeling all of your wires and connectors as you go. The last thing you want is to be putting your new dash back on and not knowing which wires and connectors connect to which wires and connectors. It'll be very confusing, it'll be very frustrating, and you're gonna waste a lot of time if you don't label. So label, okay? All right, so let's get to it. The stereo and middle vent are really just held on with clips, so start at the bottom with a flathead or a smudger tool because these clips on the top are kind of easy to break and they really just hold it in place. So get it loose with the screwdriver and then it just comes right out. And once it's out, you can unplug that mess of spaghetti and wires and then that's it. This is really one of the easiest parts, so it's a good way to grease your dash replacement wheels and then we'll get on to the glove box. And this is also really easy. To remove the glove box and the cover, just snap out the two lines that are holding the cover up. And if you're reusing this, just be a little careful here. They can break, but they just snap loose. 
Then there's a Phillips head holding the cover in place like a hinge. Mine was a little bit stripped, but the electric screwdriver did the trick for me. And don't break this little piece and make sure to save it because they're actually really hard to find for some reason. But once you get that off, the cover comes right off. Couldn't be simpler. Uh, I'd also recommend getting a little storage container with compartments for holding your screws so you can label everything and know where it goes, which will make reassembly much easier. Uh, but yeah, then there's just four 7mm screws holding the glove box tray in. Again, most of the dash is 7mm, so get those out of there, and then the tray comes right out. It couldn't be simpler. And also, I just picked this truck up a few weeks ago, so if you're lucky like me, you'll run into some surprises, and you might even find some old bonus fuses. Now, the passenger vent is held in place with just two Phillips heads. Really easy to get this out. Just remove the two screws on the top and bottom, then use like a smudger or a flathead screwdriver to pop it out from the sides. There's one clip on the top, there's one clip on the bottom. Once you pop those out, you'll get access to this tasty 30-year-old dust. And the cup holder. If you have a cup holder, cool. If you don't, skip this. But this is also pretty easy, but it's a tight, space so I didn't really have room to film this but there's just two seven millimeters on both sides under the cup holder holding it in place get those out it comes right off all right and for all of you hip cool sexy smokers out there the ashtray is held on by just four seven millimeters there's two on the bottom and then once you open the ashtray there are two on the top and once you get those two out the ashtray just kind of pops right out. Um, and this is also a great opportunity to change this little light and it just pops right out. So uh, the, the 12 volt connection though is a little bit of a challenge because it's so cramped in there, but I just used like a smudger or a flathead to, to pop the two clips off on either side. And then there is a little panel covering the steering column. So we're going to get that off. And this is just held on by two Phillips heads on the bottom. There are two clips on the top, but they're not really like clipped in. So just get the Phillips heads out and then uh, all of your screws will fall onto your floor. But then the panel comes right out. Super easy. But while we're here, let's also go ahead and do my favorite dance, the steering column drop. Uh, and the steering column is really just held on by four golden bolts. I, I'm wrong. Don't do that. There's no need to. I did this and I had to put them all back on because we really just need to pop off the two 15 millimeter bolts that are up in there. Uh, yeah. Get those off. Then the column will drop and you'll do your favorite dance. So this is where we really start making some headway. The bezel is just held on with four T20 Torx screws in all four corners. And they're probably the most visible screws, so they're really easy to find. But dropping the steering column was important because it's really hard to get this bezel out without breaking it if the column is still bolted up in place. So uh, once you get those four Torx is out, then the bezel will kind of lift right out and we'll be able to access our light plugs from the back. So we can kind of push the steering column down a bit to get the bezel out and flip it around. Once you do that, there's really just three sets of plugs back there for the lights and you can get those out just by undoing the clips, which is pretty easy. But one of them was stubborn for me, so I just used my little smudger tool here to lift up on the tab and pull it out, and then yeah, we're free. And then we have a lovely little bunch of loose cords here. Again, this was my uh, kind of problem child here, if you will, this black one. But again, just get in there with something, lift up on the tabs, and then it'll pull right out. Then there's the driver vent, and this is just held in place with one seven millimeter screw here. Uh, remove that and the vent will come right out almost too easily. And this is also a good chance to inhale some more dust if you haven't had enough. But while we're here, we can go ahead and remove some of the seven millimeters on the left side holding your gauge cluster in. And there are quite a few screws in here. So I just kind of started going at them, which you can too. I think the important thing here is just that everything has got to come out. So just start unscrewing stuff. 
because that's the goal. So to get this out, these two bolts here are not easy to get to. But once you get to them, this will slide out, and then you'll just disconnect this, and then there is a bolt here that'll let you get the, the factory radio out. So in no particular order, uh, just, I, I got these screws out, I got the clips out for this connection for the AC, uh, got some yummy, yummy dust, and then pulled the factory uh, radio out, which wasn't plugged into anything, so it came right out. Now on to getting the rest of the gauge cluster screws out. We're going to just go in there and get all those screws out. If you see a screw, it needs to go. You know what I mean? So once you get all those screws out, the gauge cluster will come right out and boom, there you go. The next is removing the pod. You don't have to do this, but I wanted to keep mine, so I did. And uh, yeah, there's just a couple of more uh, seven millimeters holding that in. Yeah, then the pod will come literally right off. Well, minus getting snagged on some cables. The next is the hood latch. The hood latch is also just two seven millimeter screws. So get in there, get that out, and it will just dangle dangle. Look at that. Then next we have the uh, rest of the screws that are just holding in the, the dash. So I'm going to get those out. There's five on the top. Uh, there's two on either side by the speakers, three in the middle by the vents. And those just come right out. And in some cases, even parts of the dash will come out. So that was not doing a good job of holding anything in. But yeah. And then we'll go ahead and get to the screws on either side by the speakers. But while we're there, we might as well just go ahead and remove the speakers. So that's what I did. That way I didn't have to walk back and forth side to side on uh, either side of the truck multiple times. So, and also while we're here, let's go ahead and just get the other screws out of the way. We're here. If you see a screw, it's got to go. So... That also includes the 13 millimeters on either side of the dash. Now, these are going to be in here pretty snugly and for good reason, uh, but just give it some elbow grease and those will come right out. Again, these are holding it into the frame uh, from the bottom. So hold on to those screws. And I don't know if you remember from earlier, but the uh, side panels from the interior by the feet... Um, Let's get those out because this is really important here. This is where I got mine all scratched up. This is kind of holding the dash in on that little latch. I don't know if you see it there, but go ahead and take those panels off. Um, and then we'll go to the other side. We'll get that other 13 millimeter screw out. And also while we're here, we'll go ahead and get the rest of the seven millimeters that are kind of hanging out here. One's holding in. A uh, little light, one's holding in, uh, I don't know what, but it's there, so get rid of it. Then we can just let this stuff all hang, and then the dash can wiggle freely. Now, probably the least visible bolt that you'll have to take out is right behind here. It's holding this vent to the dash assembly, so we've got to take that out. It, it wasn't the easiest thing in the world because it's hidden, but once you get to it, it's easy peasy. If I was wrong, there's one more hidden screw. So, on to that. Yeah, yeah, right down here, where my middle finger is. So get that one out, you're good to go, and then we'll move on to the fuse box and some other stuff. The fuse box clips right out. It's really easy, probably the easiest thing I've done in a long time. So just let that dangle and then on to the door jam switch. This tells the truck that the door is open or closed. I had a real hard time figuring this out, but it's really easy. There's this little flap here. I used a screwdriver, just kind of pried it up and then this pulls right up. Then there's the cable harness uh, that is attached to the back of the dash through two 10 millimeters. And these come out, they're a little hard to get to because you can't quite pull the dash all the way out yet, 
but they unscrew. The screws will fall into places where you don't want them to fall. You'll find them eventually, but that's okay. Now, also, there's a wire harness raceway that I totally forgot to capture. It runs from about the middle of the glove box over to the stereo bay, and it's holding all of the wires and attaching them neatly to the dash. It's just held in with some metal clips, and it's easy to kind of pop those off and remove the raceway altogether. I don't have any good video of that component, but you'll see it. Just pop it out. Your gauge cluster connection here. Uh, just snaps out. There's just tabs on either side. I can't film it because I only have two hands. But once you get once you get these clips, uh, this just slides through. Oh god! Oh god! Okay, there we go. And this uh, this slides off. I didn't slide it off because I didn't know that when I was recording. But uh, this slides off. Then on to the parking brake release, which I overthought big time. So I had a really hard time with this, but it is easy, but bear with me here. All right, so it's getting dark, and I'm stuck at the hardest thing that I've ever tried to do. Nothing has ever been this hard before in the history of mankind. We have never seen difficulty with the likes of this. Removing... The parking brake release is, as far as I can tell, completely impossible, but I'll keep you updated. Okay, so I was trying to squeeze the sides of this pin with, with pliers, with tweezers, with wrenches, with anything I could to try to get it to break free from the dash assembly. But really, all I needed to do was to get the cable from the back to release, which is so easy, but I'll get to that in a second. So there are a few things I did not get video of. One is removal of the glove box light. That goes back here. And you just need to get back there with a screwdriver to pop these tabs on either side. Um, and a mirror would be helpful too. It's the brake release cable uh, that is wedged right in here. You just take a hammer and a screwdriver, bang it out, release the cable, uh, and then you're good to go. And there was also something here. Uh, there were two bolts and then another bolt, so there were three bolts. That's how math works. And uh, yeah, you just take that out. But then the magic can happen. We're gonna pull this thing out. And I totally did not film pulling it out, but my security camera did. So there, there's the glorious moment. Yay. And that's it. Now, overall, it took me three to four hours over two afternoons to get the old dash out. And there were some frustrating parts, but overall, I think it's totally worth it to get that old crickly crackly crumbly dash out and get the new one in. Now, I got mine on eBay and you can too. Generally speaking, they're in pretty good shape, but they're a little on the pricey side. So hunt for a good deal. You can also get a brand new refrab, refrabricate, you can get a brand new refabrication dash from LMC Truck. They're the only place that makes them. They only come in one color, so you'll have to paint them whatever color you want, but they're brand new, so that works. The other option is to get a dash overlay that goes over your existing dash, which is great if you only have a few cracks here and there, but if your dash is disintegrating like mine was, it might be a good option just to replace it. Now, the other option is to go to a junkyard. From my experience, dashes in junkyard trucks aren't in great shape. If you do find one, good for you. Uh, I personally wouldn't want to spend four hours at a junkyard ripping out a dash, but if that's your best option, than it is. Now to sum this all up, please don't use this video as your only source of truth. There are other videos on YouTube that are really helpful. One in particular that I liked was from My Project Life. He's got a great couple of videos on removing a dash, installing a new one. So please go check out My Project Life and some of the other videos on YouTube. I'll link those in the description. Other than that, you've got this. It's not too bad. Just uh, start Tear, tearing out your dash.